This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Welcome in now at 7. Hoosiers ordered to stay home. Governor Holcomb announcing major steps today to try and slow down the spread of the coronavirus in Indiana. This disease is killing people. Time is of the essence. And the best thing we can do for each other, for this generation and the next, and for our economy, is to get a handle on the virus by slowing the spread. That's what we have power over. Beginning 11:59 Tuesday night, the governor says residents should only be leaving home for food, medical attention, to help others, or if you work in an essential industry. Essential services are things like hospitals, healthcare centers, grocery stores, gas stations, pharmacies, and daycares. For now, Governor Holcomb's order is set to end on April 6th. You can find a full list of essential services plus more answers about today's announcement at theindychannel.com. And as of tonight, more than three. 372,000 cases of coronavirus have been reported around the world. 16,000 people have died. 100,000 people have reportedly recovered. The countries with the most cases are China, Italy, and the United States with more than 41,000. Those numbers are being tracked by Johns Hopkins University. And here in Indiana, we know of 259 coronavirus cases. Seven people have died. Something to keep in mind, those numbers are expected to rise as testing for the virus expands. And drive through testing is underway at Eli Lilly's Indianapolis headquarters, but right now that testing is only for local health care workers and first responders. That includes physicians, nurses, pharmacists, and allied health care professionals. The testing is free. And in Washington, senators are negotiating their largest federal spending package in modern history to provide some economic relief. Under the $2 trillion bill, most adults would get $1,200 and most children would receive $500. Democrats have blocked the measure twice, demanding stronger protections for workers and limitations on bailouts for businesses. Meanwhile, several senators are in quarantine after Rand Paul tested positive for the virus. Kevin. Lots of clouds, but no rain, so that's the good news. We're dry this evening, and a big chunk of tomorrow will be dry as well. 41 in Indy, 50 almost in Bloomington. Temperatures will be about 20 degrees warmer by the end of the week. Just wanted to show you the snow that we had yesterday is now in the northeast. The rain snow mix there continues to push through New England. We bring it back home. We've got the clouds, but we stay dry until tomorrow evening about this time. I think that's when the rain will become more widespread in central Indiana. As you can see, it's a cool or cold, I guess, north wind, however you want to put it. Nothing too cold, obviously. Temperatures below average. 54 is our average temperature. We're at 41 now. Temperature in Peru at 39. Let's talk about your Tuesday temperatures. The climb will take us close to 50 degrees during the afternoon hours. Just depending on the timing of the rain, we may get a little warmer than that. Just want to point out, you'll see the showers come in by the evening hours. We'll talk more about that coming up. Indy Parks is closing family centers, nature centers, and playground to the public to keep residents safe and healthy. The facilities are still welcoming kids who are out of school with free meal services. All kids 18 and under are welcome. Monday through Friday, no registration is necessary and the hours vary by park. Indy Parks is filling the need for families who rely on free meal programs in schools. P please use these services. We understand that at, at times like this when school is out, we do know that most of the children receive at least two meals during the day just because they're enrolled in school. We want them to come. We want to make sure that in any way possible that Indy Parks can continue to be a partner in the community that we're making ourselves available to do so. There are also free meals available for adults through the Hunger Relief Agency Second Helpings. And the town of Plainfield is also working together to help people who are at high risk and must stay home for their own safety. It's called the Resident Assistance Program. It can assist with delivery of prepaid groceries and medication that are ready for pickup. Town employees who have gone through a health screening will make the pickups and drop off the items on doorsteps. But this call center is also available to others facing different challenges right now, too. Or an individual who maybe their issue is they lost their job and they don't, uh, they're concerned that they don't have enough money to be able to buy groceries and things like that. There are resources available for those individuals to help them. And so this, this call center really is becoming a, a clearinghouse where we can match up the needs that people have with resources that are available to, to meet those needs. 
The phone number to access the Resident Assistance Program is 317-839-2561. Again, that number is 317-839-2561. And they can also be emailed at residentassistance at townofplainfield.com. RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers works to connect you to job opportunities and training, but we know right now many Hoosiers are uncertain about their employment due to layoffs during the coronavirus emergency. We spoke with an economics expert with Ball State who just released a study showing the unemployment rate will exceed 10% in coming weeks. However, he believes if steps are taken to protect ordinary Americans and businesses, the economy will bounce back after social distancing is complete. The recovery should be very robust. As long as these businesses are, are available to open, if the restaurants can open once the social distancing restrictions are lifted, once we have a vaccine, we should expect a very strong, stable recovery. But the question is, how do we get there? And, and that's really the policy questions that I think both state and federal legislators are, are grappling with right now. We asked what steps all of us can take to get through this recession. He suggests to Hoosiers who are losing jobs or household income to advocate for yourself. And Hiring Hoosiers is also keeping track of the companies that are looking for extra help during the coronavirus outbreak. Dollar General is doubling its normal hiring rate and adding up to 50,000 employees by the end of April. This is to keep up with the demand for household products people want during the outbreak. And CVS wants to immediately hire 50,000 full part-time and temporary jobs across the country. About 1,000 of those jobs are in Indiana. They're looking for store associates, home delivery drivers, distribution center, and customer service workers. Many roles will be filled by existing CVS health clients who have had to furlough workers, including Hilton and Marriott. And Walmart plans to hire 2,000 people in Indiana and more than 150,000 across the country. Jobs range from stalkers to forklift drivers. People of all ages and experience levels are needed. After you've applied and provided hiring documents, you could start work within 72 hours. And you can find info on all of these jobs plus more openings as they come into our newsroom at HiringHoosiers.com. Indiana is one of many states ramping up orders to stay home. And in the country's most populous city, the Army Corps of Engineers is converting a convention center into a hospital. Overseas, Italy's coronavirus number is skyrocketing. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. The shutdown of American society is spreading. In the coming days, several more states, including Massachusetts, Maryland, Michigan, and Indiana, issuing stay-at-home orders, closing non-essential businesses, or both. Without aggressive additional measures, more people will get sick, more people will die, and our economy will suffer longer. With New York already the epicenter of the outbreak in America, Governor Andrew Cuomo ordering hospitals to increase their capacity by 50% as the Army Corps of Engineers converts New York City's Javits Convention Center into a field hospital. This is a public health emergency. This is a matter of life and death. The economy we can fix. You can't remedy a loss of your health. You can't remedy loss of life. Johns Hopkins reports 100,000 people globally have already recovered from this virus. But the World Health Organization says the pandemic is now in nearly every country and accelerating. It took 67 days from the first reported case to reach the first 100,000 cases. 11 days for the second 100,000 cases and just four days for the third 100,000 cases. Italy reporting more than 10,000 new cases in the past 24 hours and 600 more deaths, including two of their doctors. The country already largely locked down, now tightening its restrictions even further. One of the few areas of progress, the site of the original outbreak, Wuhan, China. Two months after it was locked down, the city says it's had no new confirmed cases for the past five days. Within the next few weeks, American health care providers hope to roll out a new test for COVID-19 that's much more efficient and could cut down the wait time for results to just 45 minutes. Trevor Ald, ABC News, New York. Still ahead on the news at 7, local businesses working together to give back to those who are on the front lines of the coronavirus outbreak. Storm Team 6 working for you. 
Our TV6 is highlighting the way Central Indiana is working together to support their neighbors during this tough time. Today, I Fi Indy, a music venue in Fountain Square, started an initiative with other local businesses. They have created a central location for donations to create care packages for frontline health care workers and first responders who are working long hours and running short on supplies. We're just kind of sitting around, you know, trying to figure it all out, you know, like everybody else is, and just felt like it was a lot of negative energy, and, and we weren't really getting anywhere. You know, we kind of did all the things that all the small businesses were doing for support, and um, we just kind of got to a point where, like, we've got to we've got to do something, you know, to keep ourselves occupied and, and support the folks on the front lines. Care packages with the first round of donations were sent to IU Methodist, Eskenazi, and St. Francis South. HiFi plans to collect more donations and make additional deliveries throughout the week. They are asking for local baked goods, bottled drinks, non-perishable snacks, and letters of support for caregivers. And 15 gallons of hand sanitizer will go a long way for first responders in Columbus. And that's how much the Starlight Distillery donated to the Columbus Fire Department on Sunday. The fire chief says the donation will help firefighters take all the safety precautions necessary during the COVID-19 emergency. And we want to hear your stories of Hoosiers working together during this tough time. Share the positive efforts going on in your community by emailing us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. Coming up, social distancing is not keeping a young girl from giving back to seniors and brightening their days during these uncertain times. And we'll look for some sunshine to perhaps brighten all of our days, but we've got potential rainfall amounts to talk about, the warming trend, which I think you'll like, and the late week changes as we head to the weekend. 2020 Nissan Altima. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Welcome back. Good deeds in communities across the country are appreciated now more than ever. A nine-year-old girl from Florida is going the extra mile to provide seniors with a bit of sunshine in their day. Robert Boyd with our Scripps News Partners in Tampa shares her mission with you tonight. Nine-year-old Liana Henderson has been a regular visitor at the Bear Creek Nursing and Rehab Center for the past year. From games to bedside stories, brightening up everyone's day. Some of them don't have any families or anything like that, and some of them do, and if they can't have them over and they're just really sad and they're having a lonely day, I would like to just come over and say, hi, I'm here. But with our current health crisis, visitation is no longer an option, so Liana turned to writing letters. With love and sunshine. Well, I like to say sweet things and like have an amazing day and everything good like that and always have a smile on your face. Liana's passion for community service began with the Sunshine Foundation. This year, she was recognized nationally when she was chosen as a winner in the Juicy Juice Show Your Goodness contest. There's younger kids that look up to her, children her age, uh, realizing, hey, if she can do it, I can do it. And that's really important, especially this day and age. So I'm pretty proud of her. Liana has logged more than 450 hours of service. She said making people feel special is the best part, which is why dropping off these letters is so important. So if they're having a bad day, I would like to bring some cards over because it makes them happy. How about that? Love their bright yellow shirts. And look what I found that was yellow in Hummel Park over the weekend. Signs of spring are there. You have to look for them. I think they'll become more obvious. You'll catch, uh, they'll catch your eye here later this week as temperatures on a couple of occasions get into the upper 60s. I think things are ready to really start to pop. Okay, we're below average now, but that will change. Temperatures tomorrow still lower 50s. 54 is our average high. We step up Wednesday and it will feel like spring on Thursday. The chance for rain will increase on a couple of occasions. We'll get into that timing here in a second. Let's do it now. Tomorrow, our chance for rain really tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. So more likely tomorrow night, dry Wednesday, then Thursday night, rain chances increase. Friday during the day and Saturday, periods of thunderstorms possible during that stretch. So it's really Thursday night through Saturday that looks to be the wettest stretch. During the day tomorrow, clouds through the day. 
night. There's your 7 p.m. rain, most in the southern half of the state. There'll be a patch of rain that slides through central Indiana through the early overnight. As far as rainfall potential, seems to be greatest to the south, and we take a closer look. Bedford, Seymour, maybe half an inch of rain. As you come north, I think less. This may be underplaying it just a bit as far as rainfall potential in the metro area. I'd put it a quarter of an inch or less. During the day tomorrow, we wait. That means we have a dry morning, dry afternoon, and then the rain arrives, and you see the spike in our rain chances as we get to tomorrow night and through the early overnight. Temperatures trying to get to 50 degrees. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We won't have any problem going up and over as we get to Wednesday, but tomorrow it will be a challenge to get into the lower 50s. That's pretty true. North to south across the state. Pick up the timeline tomorrow night into Wednesday morning. There we are at 7 a.m by Wednesday morning. The rain leaving, we should pick up some sunshine as we go through the afternoon hours. That'll be nice to see. It will help the temperature a bit by the time we get to noon, pushing 50. Afternoon temperatures almost to 60 degrees. Try and squeeze out all the dry hours we can when the rain comes back Thursday night and then Friday and Saturday. Some of the rain may be heavy at times. Temperatures will respond to a change in wind direction. We'll be at 68 on Thursday. Here's your seven day planner. Plan on the rain arriving tomorrow evening at this time. We're dry Wednesday, dry many hours Thursday. It's Thursday night into Friday that the showers and some thunderstorms arrive. We'll keep our eye, Amanda, on Friday night into Saturday. Some of those storms may be strong, then cooler for the second half of the weekend. Okay, thank you, Kevin. And with more businesses closing and indie residents practicing social distancing, the streets are almost empty. Our TV6 photojournalist Brad Forrestal shows you there are still some familiar faces out there keeping an eye on things and waiting for our return. There's a sweet trend going around keeping the connection between students and their teachers strong even though the school year has been disrupted. Well, today, Noblesville Crossing Elementary School teachers drove through the school's neighborhood in cars marked with their names. They honked and waved at students holding their own signs from a safe distance. Parents were encouraged to take a break from homeschooling to bring their kids outside. I have the unique opportunity to work on both sides, being an employee as well as being a parent. And I know what a stressful time this is. So the fact that the teachers wanted to do this to show love to us and we want to show love back to them and how much we appreciate everyone's work during this time. The next teacher parade is happening in the Promise Road Elementary neighborhood on Wednesday at 5 p.m. More Noblesville schools plan to hold parades in April. Many businesses are open right now, especially restaurants for carryout. We're Open Indy is our new mission to remind you that Hoosiers need your help during this challenging time. You can join us and help by heading to businesses that are ready to serve you. Head to our website. It's up right now on your screen. When you're there, you'll see an entire list of restaurants and other businesses that are still open to serve you. Well, we can focus on the thermometer as it turns positive over the next several days, warming nicely. I think they'll peak Thursday, upper 60s for the high. We cool a little bit as the rain settles in Friday and Saturday, but still mild. Well, thank you for making RTV6 your choice for news. Our next newscast is tonight at 11. We'll leave you with this view of the Westview.